Okay, um, got the timing belt on. Um, you can actually kind of see that, like right here, you can see this is one of my marks for my, um, put, you know, putting the, uh, the timing belt on. Um, don't worry, that I had actually rotated the engine a couple times, actually like about four times so far. Um, the reason why is because you can see the alignment marks. This is set to TDC right now, uh, for a cylinder TDC. You can see that the alignment marks are right here and right there. So they're actually on the areas that they're supposed to be at. Um, the, the difference is, is that I actually just followed um, this in the, in the book. Um, so it's basically saying the number of teeth for between the right hand and left hand camshaft sprockets and uh, between the left hand cam sprocket and the crankshaft timing sprocket. Uh, 40 and 33 um, So I just actually followed this guide count. I actually counted it all out when the belt was off the the um, The car and then they have actually these alignment marks and um, I just aligned all those to get them all set properly um, I did get it set properly, so <clears throat> don't worry about it too much <clears throat> one thing and I'm just gonna say this right now is that this one actually just looks a little bit off like almost like one tooth off the punch mark but I'm not going to be too worried about that because I did set the belt right I counted the numbers teeth on the belt everything else is alignment I double triple checked it to make sure that I was doing it right so um, I am pretty sure I've, I've got it right but just to kind of go over this this is actually an extensive process you actually have to um, the book you have to set the um, you have to use a uh, allen wrench and pull the tensioner out of the way so you, you kind of hook it in and then you pull it out to kind of um, give uh, take the pressure off of it off the, off the belt once you slip it on because the belt's going to be loose when you slip it on um, then you actually when you use that allen wrench to move it out of the way and then you lock down the nut um, after you lock down the nut um, you're, able, you're able to get everything all kind of set properly to get the belt set up and all the, and the sprockets set up properly um, and get the just kind of slip the belt on. It's going to be definitely loose then. So after that, actually, you're going to want to actually do. Um, you're going to want to do this step. So this is after engine overhaul or engine reassembly. You're going to want to follow these ones, not the other ones, because those are if you just replace the belt. So for this one, you move the you move the um, tensioner out of the way. But then you put a, you actually test the you use a feeler gauge to put um, between the belt and the and the tensioner. Um, it, it's a it's a 0 0.05 millimeter um, feeler gauge, and I actually have one of those, and I put it in already. And then you actually you're gonna want to put now you're not gonna put that one in yet. Actually, you're gonna try you're gonna. Um, Take a your tension gauge, and actually my pencil tension gauge, and I actually got this one from Amazon. Um, this is a Gates one. I, I can give you the model number real quick. I'm gonna go get the box, but it actually took me a long time to find this one, only because there was no picture number one on Amazon. And number two, um, a lot of the ones that I found were for motorcycle belts. And those are obviously not what you're gonna need. Not what you're gonna need. These are actually for I don't know, just industrial use, I think. But it's a tension tester up to 30 pounds now, because this one actually calls for. Um, actually, go to the section we have. 22 pounds right there. Um, a lot of the ones I saw were the minimum was 30, so that would definitely wouldn't have been what I needed. Um, this number, product number, is right here. Let's see if I can focus on that. 7401-0076 you can find it on Amazon there is no picture so look for the I, I the way I typed it in was pencil tension tester pension pencil deflection gauge stuff like that I really looked for it but this is it it's really nice um, one great aspect of it let me turn the light on um, let's focus on that you can see this is kilograms and if you rotate it to pounds and I actually had it set to 22, this little O-ring got moved, so, um, there it is. 
see it. Uh, so, you know, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20. It's always on zero. And it was like right around 20 and 25, I said, around 23 or so. But what you basically do is you set it on the belt. And this is actually, the first step is actually just doing it on this side, but I'll just do it on this side real quick. You set it on the belt. You get your O-ring set up here. Then you actually take a straight edge. And for this one, I actually used just a regular metal ruler. I gauged about where it was currently at that time. So I just put a mark where wherever it lied. Then I put the gauge on top. Oh, it's hard to see, sorry. Gauge on top. All you do is you, you kind of key off this O-ring right here and you just push down. And then when you get to your, your area that you want to you want to measure at, the 22 where that O-ring hits, where it hits the um, this bottom out area right here, I just put another marking on the ruler, took it out, measured it up, and this is within specifications that they were actually looking for. So um, this is actually, this right here is actually the same graph on the other page, which is the exact same thing. Um, so 22 pounds, and then they would they want you to do 13 to 15 millimeters, or 0 0.015 to 0 0.095 inches. And I measured this out with another ruler, and it was totally at about 0 0.05, 0 0.015 um, deflection, um, how, how much that was that they value was. So I was definitely within um, spec, so which is really, really great. Um, so in regards to the bottom area about setting the tension, you basically have to set your feeler gauge down here. Um, and you rotate the crank so that it actually sits between the the um, belt and the tensioner. So basically right here, don't set it over here, don't set it down here. It actually says that NG, which NG, and if you look at a lot of um, kind of Japanese manuals, NG means no good. So just FYI but you're going to want to set it right between the belt and the tensioner um, and then rotate it in, you know, then use that hex wrench, sorry, the Allen key to put kind of consistent pressure against this. Not, not like keep raking it in, don't make the belt too, too tight right here. But what you're going to want to do then is then lock down the nut so that it doesn't move around anymore. I believe this one is within spec, kind of about this same one. And then this one is going to fall into line. But they basically just have you gauge off this one and this one. And I think this one will just fall in line. But the steps are very um, precise and very kind of confusing to an extent. I mean, it's, it can be a little bit confusing. But if you follow, follow them just one at a time, kind of trying to translate what you're trying to do each time, um, I think you anybody could do this. It's just you really have to take the time to kind of decipher the language. That's, I think, the hardest part. But other than that, I think, I think I'm think i set with the timing belt. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the deflection. That was actually my, my biggest, not concern, but you know, the biggest thing that I wanted to gauge off of how well this is installed is this deflection right here. How is this deflecting? Um, and ho I hope it's, you know, enough. But, uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on this. I hope that this I didn't. I'm not a tooth off. <laughs> I'll know right away because the engine will run like shit. Because it, you know it'll be all off. But um, let's hope that this is not off. That I believe this one's off or on, and then the crankshaft's on. But I just, I'm curious about this one. I'll keep an eye on it. All right. So time belts on. Um, gonna start buttoning stuff up. One thing I do want to um, emphasize, and really I'm doing a lot of research on right now, is getting the um, the um, harmonic balancer on because I, you know, I showed you guys the busted one. I actually got the new one. It's actually it looks really nice, really great, um, very clean. I just don't want to screw that one up either, so I'm trying to find a, a way to get that on without screwing it up either. Okay, I uh, think that's gonna be it for right now. I'm gonna get the cover on, and yeah, um, moving on to the next thing. Thanks.